Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I guess I'm a, a closing act of a, a great conference that I've been able to myself only uh, jump in and out of uh, during uh, the last uh, couple of days. So uh, I've only been able to catch snippets of the wisdom. Uh, but clearly, uh, the International Forum on Digital and Democracy has been extraordinarily successful in giving uh, a, a forum, an e-agora, to uh, debate and discussion over absolutely consequential uh, and unsolved challenges of living in our new digital age. Uh, clearly, we are in a period of uh, massive disruption that is uh, extraordinary even by the uh, standards of uh, extraordinary years that we're living through. Um, this year, the weirdest of all, uh, no doubt because of uh, COVID, uh, but also if you put together COVID and Trump and uh, the uh, dramatic uh, uh, acceleration of digitalization and the upheaval of all of our lives and the most radical redistribution of income and wealth in history in recent months, uh, we've got a, a lot to grapple with and a lot to understand. Um, in my country, we're fighting, I think we'll make it, but it's weird, fighting for the survival of uh, a democracy in the face of not only a, a clear psychopath uh, as president, uh, the worst and most dangerous president uh, in, in our history, uh, but clearly a public uh, that were a substantial part of the public is absolutely um, off the rails right now uh, in terms of uh, what we thought were basic standards and norms uh, of belief uh, and behavior. 61% of Americans believe that the polls uh, recently, the elections were uh, trustworthy. Uh, that's a shockingly low number. But among Republicans, uh, who are about a third of the electorate, that number is 24 percent believe that the uh, elections were trustworthy. We have a substantial part of our country that has, uh, right or wrong, uh, lost uh, lost uh, the readiness and uh, willingness and uh, faith to continue with the basic rules of the game uh, of, uh, of uh, the United States. And uh, I raise that because it's clearly related to the digital disruption uh, and to the nature of uh, our uh, deeply divided uh, world of uh, information and disinformation uh, that is occurring right now. Uh, the digital disruption is so deep that there's no part of society untouched. Uh, first, in the economy, obviously, uh, we have massive new monopolies, uh, which even in the United States is acknowledged. Remember, my country is a country that uh, loves monopoly power. Uh, it buys political power, uh, and yet even uh, in the United States, it's acknowledged that the new tech uh, mandarins or portals uh, are running the show right now. Uh, and of course, they've had a staggering increase of market capitalization and market power and personal power and political power in uh, this uh, COVID-19 year. Uh, Almost all of our services, our survival day to day, it depends on a few uh, websites and portals and companies right now. Uh, jobs uh, have shifted by the millions in a very short period of time. And we have uh, still fundamental divisions of even basic access to this new digital system. So there are people who are completely disenfranchised from uh, daily life economically, uh, don't have access to any of the services, can't uh, participate in e-commerce, 
much less defend their political rights because they don't even have internet coverage. And uh, in the world as a whole, that's half the world population. Uh, that is uh, outside of, uh, of uh, internet access. Clearly, society has been disrupted as much as the economy has been disrupted. Our belief systems are diverging rapidly. We cannot agree on anything in the United States anymore, and I think it's uh, probably true uh, in many other parts of the world. But in the US, we can't even run an election anymore. Uh, because the votes are counted, uh, the systems are used, and then, uh, as I said, uh, one of the two political parties says uh, that was not a trustworthy process. Uh, if the other side had won, uh, I would have been horrified for the future of the world, but I would have trusted the count. Uh, but uh, this is, uh, we're not even at that level anymore. Obviously, we listen to completely different streams of purported information. Uh, I don't even know the names of the channels uh, or the main sources of information of the right, but it's clearly completely different from anything that I look at. Our networks are completely different. Uh, and of course, one of the main issues of this conference, uh, we have no idea uh, how we're being monitored, uh, what the status of our privacy or complete lack of privacy is. I just assume everybody's watching me. Uh, that's not a matter of paranoia. I just mean that every time a cookie comes up on my system, I don't know what it means because I'm not a tech uh, person and I can't judge, but I just anticipate that Everything is accessible, and once in a while, the curtain is raised a little bit on what Google or Facebook or the U.S. government uh, or uh, others uh, are listening into, and it's positively horrifying, but we don't even have an adult discussion of that in the United States at all. We have absolutely no social demand to know what Facebook's doing to us or how they're using the data, no political structure for that. It's the weirdest uh, uh, phenomenon. Our politics uh, obviously uh, has being, uh, is, is, is being destabilized as our society and our markets. I'm not sure what is uh, coming first, uh, but uh, we have mass mobilization, but mass polarization that is being fed by uh, these networks. Uh, they are great tools for mobilization. Uh, it's possible to apparently argue almost any point on anything from the most bizarre conspiracy theories uh, to uh, falsehoods that are blatantly false before one's eyes and command a significant part of the population. If you're able to direct the flow of images and uh, data to them uh, through favorite websites, and we are destabilizing geopolitics as well. Uh, we don't know where that's heading, uh, but uh, the uh, attempt of the US to surround China, to contain China, to stop the flow of technology to China, in my view, is reckless and dangerous. Uh, this is not to uh, endorse uh, everything anybody is doing, but dividing up the world uh, in an in invidious way uh, is inherently dangerous in a nuclear age. Uh, but the uh, grandiosity and the bravado of the US side that were the side of the saints uh, and the other side is the side of the villains is uh, patently false and dangerous. I can tell you the United States government is a very dangerous government under Donald Trump, uh, a great disruptor of the world, uh, a terrifying prospect uh, to uh, uh, lead us into a new Cold War. So uh, judging from the discussions that I've been able to uh, get to in the international forum. We haven't solved all these problems yet, uh, let me say. Uh, these are really huge and rapidly uh, evolving 
phenomena. Uh, I think that there is a general consensus that uh, by the fundamental nature of these technologies, uh, which is their mass scalability, their zero marginal cost, uh, we have created new forms of power, public and private, that are very dangerous. Uh, I think that this is uh, probably the uh, number one point. This is inherent in a technology that can scale to billions of people in a very short period of time. These are astoundingly good technologies uh, from the point of view of being able to do things that could not be done before. But they have created massive power, just as they have created massive wealth. And that power is unaccountable, and it's not even understood. Certainly, we do not know what our governments are doing with the data, though I trust European governments a lot more than I trust my own government uh, on this. Uh, when Edward Snowden told us briefly uh, what the US government was doing, he had to flee for his life, literally. Uh, and uh, then there was no follow-up uh, to what he, uh, what he uh, told us uh, because no one would discuss it. Uh, and so he pulled the curtain back there was the Wizard of Oz exposed. It didn't matter. The wizard just kept right on as if the curtain hadn't been pulled back. Uh, but the one who pulled it back uh, was uh, sent into exile, uh, not to be heard of again. And uh, this is uh, the first point, power and unaccountability. Uh, complete lack of transparency, except if you are a wizard in these technologies. So I ask some of you who are the organizers at this conference what's really going on, and you give me answers. But without your answers, even though I'm a fairly astute observer of public policy in certain spheres, I don't have a clue as to what's really happening in this sphere of uh, the world, uh, because uh, we don't understand, we civilians in the digital age, do not understand the business models, do not understand the uh, technology platforms, do not understand uh, what is known and captured from our systems and not. Uh, and so the lack of transparency is uh, absolutely uh, astounding. We are clearly going to have to design new solutions. They're not going to evolve uh, in a uh, disorder, a, a, a bottom-up uh, market self-organizing way. I think one of the striking facts of uh, these technologies is how dominant the early movers have become, uh, how entrenched they have become. And this is something perhaps uh, intrinsic to the technology itself because of its scale, scale and scope economies. But it's a little surprising in how markets work, uh, that there is so much dominance and staying power uh, of uh, some of the early movers. But clearly, they're using their market power and their market capitalization and their political influence to crush opponents or to buy them out uh, or actively to stop the competition in other ways. And Facebook is clearly uh, uh, case exhibit A in this, uh, that it has been relentless uh, in either stomping out competition or buying out competition, uh, but uh, leaving itself with phenomenal market power, capitalization, and unaccountability. And its platform has been one of the greatest dangers to our democracy in the United States of uh, any such change in, uh, in our modern history. So I'm the last to uh, give the conclusions, uh, and the last, I should say, to be able to give the conclusions uh, to this conference. Uh, what I can do as a uh, consumer of the wisdom of this conference is beg and ask for IFDAD to uh, schedule its next round of events and seminars and workshops and the next annual conference, because what you have established is extremely important. We need a 
urgently need this uh, global forum on digital and democracy. Uh, clearly, you've been able to bring together world thought leaders in this area and uh, bring the quality of information analysis and deliberation to the highest levels on this topic uh, that exist. And we need this urgently. Maybe 2021 will give us a little respite if we get that psychopath out of office. And I think uh, it's likely to be the case. Uh, he really did destabilize the United States. And because the US has such financial and geopolitical influence a lot of other parts of the world. Maybe we can get on to taxing these tech giants as uh, the world wants to do. Maybe we can get on to spreading the good ideas of Europe's uh, 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 privacy regulations uh, and its intense on uh, enforcing demonopolization, something that Trump, of course, was resisting. Uh, so maybe we'll make some progress in 2021, uh, but certainly let's meet in 2021. Uh, let's uh, make sure that if that keeps the platform. Uh, the final thing is for me to uh, close with an announcement of the winner of the best paper uh, for this conference uh, as judged by the audience poll that was taken. Uh, and I'm very uh, proud and pleased uh, and I've read it uh, and it's a wonderful paper. Uh, to say that uh, the audience uh, has uh, uh, voted uh, the paper by Larissa Galdino de Magas Santos on uh, the challenges of urban data ethics, big data and intelligence system to support decision making uh, as the uh, lead paper for the conference. Congratulations, uh, Larissa. Uh, it's a paper about uh, the uh, monitoring systems that were put in place uh, in Sao Paulo and uh, the challenges of governance and transparency and accountability, all the themes of this conference. So congratulations uh, on uh, being chosen as the best paper. Congratulations uh, to the organizers uh, of uh, IFDAD. Uh, what a wonderful contribution. What a wonderful way to uh, end, end a very complicated year. Uh, but uh, we ended uh, much informed uh, invigorated and encouraged to go on uh, to design new solutions to protect our democracy, our rights, uh, and uh, our human decency. Thank you very, very much.